can't escape me, I'll chase you to the ends of the earth! With so many people getting their reissued version of the Mayfix Black Suit Symbiote Spider-Man, I figured, you know what? Let me actually dig up the one that I've been saving for quite a while. I actually have been owning this guy for a bit, and technically speaking, I didn't really get him brand new. He was secondhand, but I just knew that after covering the classic suit Mayfix Spider-Man and feeling the quality behind it, I thought to myself, yeah, there's a definitive checkbox that I need a tick. And that's going to be the black suit variant here because it's black suit Spidey. He looks badass. I gotta have him. And so that kind of motivated me to want to cover this guy. But the one thing to keep in mind though is that technically speaking, this is the original release. I just happened to get it secondhand. But I want to see if maybe there's some kind of difference in quality or something that maybe is just going to be rather ubiquitous with, with Mayfix releases, whether it be re-releases, reissues, or the original printings. And that goes for both the good things and the bad things as far as quality, as far as paint mishaps, and you'll see what I mean as I kind of break down this black suit symbiote Spidey, which is of course lifted from the comics, straightforward black, with a few hints and hues of blue. If you look a little closely around the thigh, bicep, and leg area, you'll notice that you have a little, uh, a few patches here and there of this kind of bluish tint to kind of make this whole suit a little bit more symbi symbiotic. However, you'll notice that it's also got a cross between like a satin matte finish to the texturing itself. So it's not a full on slimy glistening texture to the surface of the plastic. And so overall, you'll see here that he's pretty much lifted from that specific comic arc. And it just comes to show how much of a very simple yet very effective job for any toy company really, whether it be Mayfix, Figure Arts, Marvel Legends, a work like this can really go. As far as you get those qualities behind the plastic, the paint just right, you don't have to go crazy in terms of texture, in terms of blending in colors. Like I said, the the, the most uh, complex thing that Mayfix did here is adding that bluish tint that is a little difficult to pick up on camera, but if you look a little closely during some macro shots or some really up close personal shots with your naked eye, you'll notice those blue tints. Otherwise though, he's predominantly black with a few hints of white, whether it be on on the hands as you see right there which they decided to go for this like trapezoidal look to the actual patches that he has on his on the top of his hands as opposed to just a straightforward white rectangle and he technically does have like this baby blue kind of stripe going down the bottom of the soles of his foot and technically it is comic accurate I just never understood it even when it was presented in the panels of those comics why he had the blue soles on his shoes I, I don't know maybe it's just a aesthetical thing maybe it's a printing thing I don't know but it, it is pleasing I mean it definitely stands out a little bit better than to have the original red shoes underneath that would have definitely stood out and looked a little awkward but at least the blue blends better with black and then, of course, the white symbols, both on the front and on the back, that completely connect around the oblique area and look very, very nice clashing up against that black. It's very, like I said, symbolic towards the symbiote, symbolic towards Venom. It's very iconic and very quintessential for this arc and for this portrayal. The only thing, though, that I need to call Mafex on is something that apparently is not just exclusive to their reissues, because I did see some people point this out on Reddit, saying that, oh, no... I got a mispainted symbol on my black suit reissued Spider-Man. Turns out that that's not necessarily something that is privy to the reissues. It looks like the originals also had a little bit of a mishap when it came to some of those printings or some of those paint applications of the white symbol on his chest. You'll see right here that around the legs on either side, it looks a little misprinted. So that's something that Mayfix still has yet to kind of hone in on the technology which for the originals it's a little easier not the best not the you know good thing to do but rather the easier thing to do to give them a little bit of a pass because it's like okay it's the first release they overlooked it yada yada fine whatever if they reissue the figure that's something that they could potentially fix but from what i'm hearing they didn't still fix it for the reissue some people are still reporting some paint some white paint kind of coming out of the edges of the actual printing of the symbol on the front or on the back and even some people have reported seeing a little bit of that paint also ooze out from the lenses on the head sculpt which is very well done as far as sculpting and actual molding is concerned especially going for some indentations here to kind of pronounce the brow a little better 
to kind of make him look a little bit more aggressive. It kind of fits into the personality of the symbiote arc. But from what I can tell, mine thankfully has pretty uh, pretty synchronized, if you will, uh, eyes as far as the white paint apps are concerned. But some people have reported some white kind of coming out of the lines where the eyes are actually sketched out because you'll notice that there are some textural differences it's kind of it's kind of got a little bit more of a glossy finish to the eyes as opposed to the rest of the head which again is really well done as far as sculpting but to hear that happening with the reissue is very very disappointing and it's making me a little scared that some of those reissues were a little bit rushed out because maybe they don't really have too much coming down the pipeline i mean the fact that they're going to so many reissues to begin with Sure, it grants a second chance opportunity for people who missed out the initial release, especially when these things start to go for a really handsome penny over on the aftermarket. But when you're going to be dishing out on some rushed quality jobs, especially after my account of the Venom and Carnage reissues that had some QC problems, Mayfix, we're going to have to sit down and talk. Visual discrepancies aside though, I can't deny that this symbiote Spidey does look pretty good as far as shelf presence is concerned because the physique is definitely there. He's definitely got great musculature happening all around while at the same time still retaining the slimmer design that he had in the earlier comics. You can almost feel like there's a little bit of Ultimate Spider-Man in there, even though that's not the intention, but it's just something that it just kind of reminds me to. And just overall, a lot of people think that this is the quintessential look of the black suit Spidey, and I wouldn't necessarily fight them on that, because he definitely looks the part. Like I said, despite a few of the QC problems as far as the painting here is, the quality behind the plastic feels really good in hand, the actual, you know, actual look of the character as far as also getting the proportions right i never see anything stand out to me in the negative light even with the shins right here which are kind of reminding me of the recent venom reissue where i was kind of nitpicking it for looking a little too custom like there towards the bottom of the legs and to show you what i mean i actually have him right here in hand that you'll notice that they simply took this guy and kind of bulked them out. It's a new sculpt. I'm not saying it's the same exact buck or anything like that. But it's technically speaking building off of the foundation of this guy. And then bulking him up to be the roided out Venom. But you'll see right here that a few of the blueprinting happening along the leg area. Specifically the shin is almost identical. Just a little girthier. And it fits for Spidey because technically speaking he's still wearing a suit and underneath he's still going to be human Peter Parker. But Venom, it's it's the symbiote. So it's like, okay, it kind of, I don't know why, but if for some reason it makes sense better for Peter and the Spider-Man suit. Not so much for Venom because he's meant to be a bit more roided out, a bit crazier. So to see that the bottom legs have still kind of like the suit quality to him. It, it was a little disappointing even when I was calling it back in that initial review. The rest of him is still pretty awesome, especially with the musculature and the beefiness of the top part of the body and the head. But you can see right here exactly what I was trying to talk about. And it's good to see that the, reviewing this guy is finally painting a broader picture of what I was meaning with Venom. And for greater posterity, here we have him right next to number 185, Classic Suit Spider-Man. Number 185, which means this is the version that is a little less glossy, a little bit brighter on the color hue, and he doesn't come with the Peter Parker head. This is the only version that I was able to get at retail because the other one was, is now going for like, goddamn, like 200 bucks almost. It's apparently a rare figure that... I would even say it's probably due for a reissue if Mafex is going to be continuing this trend. But you'll notice right here that for the most part, they're pretty much to scale with each other as far as height, as far as proportions. But I would even argue that the body sculpting on the symbiote Black Suit Spidey is a little better than that of the classic. I even mentioned this in my initial review of this guy that's up on the channel right now where... There's certain parts of the body that look really nice and there's others where I feel like when he's in a neutral position, it looks a little disproportionate. Something about the legs versus the torso just look a little off. Whereas this guy, in any kind of neutral position, just looks very uniform and just looks much more right at home with itself. So I would argue that if they can maybe take this sculpt and just redecorate and repaint it with this hue or this specific color palette... I would be more than happy to double down on some, some some form of reissue. And you know what that means. If it's looking really good in terms of proportions, in just being a static pose, you know that means he's going to look even better when actually posing him via the articulation, which is pretty standard for a Mafex. Nothing terribly out of the ordinary. You have the two joints at the neck that allow the head to fully rotate at the top 360, as well as slightly tilt, actually really well tilt, 
upwards and downwards and then of course further movement in any kind of direction whether it be tilting side to side or up and down via the bottom neck joint right about right there top shoulder joints are really well done as far as the ball joint that allows the arm to rotate 360 degrees vertically and extension towards the sides there on the inside hinge and then of course a really fluid butterfly joint or shoulder joint right there that allows full shrugging up and down movement left and right or rather in a diagonal it's not really a full-on horizontal front and back but rather diagonal but it's still the mobility is fully functional right about right there even being second hand the mobility has not been lost or anything like that i had no need to put them under a hair dryer or any kind of hot water i would feel like that's just a testament to the quality of plastic that may fix likes to use or at least used in their original releases i can't really speak too much for the reissues i feel like i need to get at least one more reissue under my belt apart from the carnage and the venom to finally say eh looks like they're skimping out but i cannot call it just yet so they're still in good standing as far as my my perception is concerned then we do have the biceps that are fully able to rotate in place 360 two joints at the elbows that are fully able to bend all the way up wrist joints that i can still move 360 degrees as well as the hinge inside that is fully able to bend inwards and outwards no problem Again, pretty standard fare, nothing to really go crazy, but it's all about the quality that really stands out there as far as the fluidity, especially, again, I have to keep hammering this point across, it's second hand, it's been under the possession of somebody else for years, came down to me, and here we are still being able to move so many joints, including the mid-torso, which can't really rotate 360 degrees, if I push it a little farther, it does come off, but it's easy to pop back on, still feels pretty snug, turning left and right, as well as being able to bend inwards and outwards and crunch, as well as further crunching inwards and outwards and side to side on the waist, and even a little bit of turning on the crotch sculpt or the crutch diaper right there before it starts to squeak just a tad, and if you really want to get down to it, you can even kind of shift the torso to kind of do like a hula hoop kind of a mobility right there but it really does lend to some awesome poses mid swing if you will then the top leg joints are fully able to bend forwards about that far almost at a full diagonal rotation right about right there and even a little bit of pivoting towards the back side right there before the ass sculpt kind of gets in the way and full almost eh, not really i was about to say full 180 extension towards the sides but it looks like it's, it kind of ends just shy a little bit of that but much like with other mafexes you do have that drop down dumbbell joint that allows full dropping down of the leg downwards like so before you have this little gap in between the crotch diaper piece and the leg and you're able to easily shift it upwards but of course that allows more mobility for the legs to go in different directions and even a little bit of swiveling in that place there's no actual thigh cuts or swivels but you can technically swivel the leg in place on the top leg joint just a tad as you can see demonstrated right about right there two knee joints that are fully able to bend all the way up and feel very fluid and good in hand and it looks like a similar case can be found although it's a little better hidden with the ankle ball joints that you can see right there fully able to bend the foot up and down and rotate it all the way around as well as being able to pivot the foot inwards and outwards kind of at inclined kind of direction and that's cool that it's got full mobility right there to lend to some poses and really great balancing when you're trying to get them to stand and then the toesies are still found there on the shoe pieces but unfortunately they don't bend all the way up they could have been done a little bit better but it is what it is and i want you to take all of that articulation that i just pointed out how fluid it is how great it feels in hand how it's able to lend to so many poses so many badass cool looking shots of symbiote spidey and compare it to the marvel legends <laughs> you knew this was coming pete yes of course i can't talk about this mafex black suit without talking about the marvel legends black suit that was released back in what was it 2021 2022 that was part of that retro card wave or whatever it was called now here's the thing before you think that this is going to be a huge gozzle fest over the Mafex and a huge bashing fest at the Marvel Legends, you'll be surprised by how certain things actually kind of favor on the Marvel Legends. They're a little bit more on the superficial side and rather subjective, but still, there's some things that... I think either company can learn from each other here. First and foremost, proportion-wise, you can see that Mafex knew exactly where to go with the physique, how to make it faithful to the comic adaption, while at the same time making sure that every part of the body actually felt like it was consistent with each other. It actually feels like it's a Spider-Man figure, whereas with Marvel Legends, I can tell that it's a 
pre-existing Spider-Man figure that I bought, I feel, what, two, three times. It's one of the things that I kept kind of starting to complain about with Marvel Legends and what kind of retroactively made me retire from Marvel Legends because it was feeling like I was pulling the same figure out of the... Like, I just couldn't fight the feeling. It doesn't matter if it's a different case with some of the legs or some of the hands or whatever, or maybe the head sculpt is different. Every time I pulled one out of the box, whether it be windowless or windowed, I still felt, in my heart of hearts, I was pulling out the same figure, only with a different coat of paint. Now, the only reason why I haven't sold this guy is because I still dig the actual aesthetic of the black suit Spidey, and I did feel like, for the most part, I got a good, I got lucky with the buck that actually I pulled out of the box, as far as articulation, as far as plastic, no QC problems, anything like that. And so I decided to keep it in my collection for the time being, but there's still no denying that Marvel Legends just took an existing mold and just painted it black with the white symbol. However, the white symbol, on a subjective note, not only is it very well done as far as painting, it doesn't feel like it's kind of coming or dripping out of the sides like what Mafix was doing, but subjectively speaking, just my own personal opinion, I feel like I kind of like this design a little better than the slimmer one from the Mafex. Even accuracies aside, even if though technically speaking this is probably the more accurate one in the comics than this, there's something kind of badass looking about this one. And I actually kind of like the shaping of the eye lenses a little better on this guy than the giant oval exaggerated ones that you see right here. I just wish that maybe we can kind of fuse the two together where we have the sculpting of the brow and the paint applications or the paint quality of the lenses for this guy, but then match it to the shape of this guy. That would be perfect. Apart from that, however, the proportions for this guy is just a little kookly, as the kids like to say, especially those thighs just kind of bulging, almost like tumors rather than actual thigh muscles. The abdomen, the shoulder area, way chiseled out. And that's just, again, a testament to that just kind of gives it away that this is an existing Spider-Man that was used before only with the black coat of paint with the white symbol and the white eyes and also the rectangular patch on the hands right there, which I'm rather indifferent to. I really don't care if it's going for the horizontal straightforward one that you see or the rectangular one that you see right here on the Marvel Legends or the trapezoidal one on the Mafex. That, I really don't care for that kind of stuff. But one thing that I do care for is articulation, which feels very... Even though no significant QC problems as far as feeling too stuck or feeling too kind of uh, loose or anything like that in either kind of direction with the Marvel Legends... It definitely feels a whole lot better to move the Mafix around than it does for the Marvel Legends. So you'll see right here exactly where the extra bit of money goes to when it comes to a Mafix of this caliber. And sure, a lot of you are probably already typing in the comments, dude, it's $25 versus what, 80, 90 bucks? Especially if you're getting this secondhand before the reissues came out. This guy was going for like a whopping 120, 130 because of how rare he was up until Mafix issued those reissues out. And then you could find, if you were down for importing him from over in Japan and waiting a few extra weeks, you could actually kind of get that yen conversion in your favor and get him for about 60 to 70 bucks, maybe add a few 15, 20 bucks for some faster shipping across the seas, and you're really rounding it up to about 80 to 90 bucks. So, what does $70 extra or about 65 bucks extra get you for? Well, like I mentioned, the better feeling articulation, the posability, the quality of plastic, the accuracy, some would say. And then, of course, supplemental accessories. There's Marvel Legends. <laughs> the extra hands. No webs. No. What do you think this is? No webs. No alternate head. No, it's the extra hands. The very basic hands. You got the fisted. You got the open. You got the web shooting. Have fun. All right. That's it. Whereas with Mafex, not only do you get the open hands that he comes with default with, but of course you get fisted hands, open wall crawling hands, if you want to call them that, naturally web shooting hands, web holding hands with the little thumbs kind of sticking out from the side right there, and of course a hole etched out. And because this is Mafex, an extra pair of shoes and open hands, however, these last two Hand and foot accessories come with, of course, the implanted magnets so that you're able to try to recreate some wall crawling poses on some magnetic surfaces. Now, one thing that I will call out Mafex, though, is that whether it be with a reissue like with Venom and Carnage or their original releases here, 
magnets aren't that strong. They can barely stick to anything that's really magnetic unless it's something that's a little bit lower to the ground. So if you have a lot of gravity working against you, you're better off you know, posing him firmly on the ground or using the included plastic base that Mayfix also still tosses in. And of course, those badass mid-air poses are nothing without your web strand accessories, which this time they decided to literally double down on every single variety, whether it be the short ones, the long ones, or the uh, holding mid-swing L-shaped ones. But this time they didn't just go with like, oh, two short ones and one long one, or Two medium ones, one short one, one long one, you know, kind of like this asynchronatic kind of thing. No, they actually tossed in two of each. So they didn't spend any expense. Granted, you're, you know, they're pretty generic. They're just white and they got the texturing on there that's pretty faithful to the webs that you see in the comics, but nothing to really write home about. It's just the inclusion of all these varieties and the actual numbering of them, like I said, two each. That makes me go, okay, you know, you're, you're spending a little bit of extra cash on the webs, but what is this? No, seriously. What is this? I understand it's supposed to be a web backpack. I'm personally not a huge fan of this accessory, mainly because the web strands that are used as like the backpack straps to fit on him are feel incredibly delicate to where I'm legitimately scared to play around with this. And I feel like I may not be the only one justified in feeling this way because if you do a very quick search on either eBay or Mercari, almost every single time that I found this guy being sold in the aftermarket, like 90% of them have the seller writing in the description, hey, just letting you know, one of the strands on the backpack got broken. Like literally every time, every time that I looked up a listing, the backpacks, one of the backpack strands was broken. And so that just kind of comes to show that this accessory probably would have been better off being cut out of the overall package and maybe saving a few extra bucks. I understand the intention. It's supposed to be a backpack for Spidey for when he was kind of cruising around. And it's, you know, it's got a decent texturing, but to me it just looks like a white bicycle seat that just happens to have web strands on them. But putting it on him, it's pretty straightforward. Just bend the arms back, fit it in there, and it fits pretty flush to his back, but... I am almost never really going to pose him with this thing. I'll sooner pose him with the alternate heads that he comes with than the backpack. He comes with another masked head that looks pretty identical except a little shinier. Although I don't feel like that's Mayfix's fault. I feel like that might just be the previous seller. I don't know what he was doing with this head. I, don't, I really don't want to call too much attention to it. But this time he's sporting a much more frowned and aggressive and angry expression on his face. Granted, that unfortunately calls a little bit of attention to the paint mishaps that did happen on the eyes this time around. So another little uh, little uh, complaint that I do have to forward on over to Mayfix, guys. You see right here that a little bit of the paint is starting to kind of bleed on over from the edges of the eyes sculpt or the lenses sculpted into the mask itself. But at least I really do dig this expression. Does a wondrous job of really delivering that aggressive feel to the proportions and to the overall presence of the black suit Spidey. But if that's not your game, you also have this alternate unmasked Peter Parker head and neck piece that comes with the little tendrils of the symbiote kind of coming off right here, a very fine touch. And the head itself is pretty much lifted from that initial Mayfix with the unmasked Peter Parker head sculpt. However, this time they remolded the hair to look a little bit more shaggy and completely untidy. They even gave him a little bit of a 5 o'clock shadow painted on. And overall, the head sculpt itself is really well done as far as giving it that comic book look while at the same time retaining the paint aesthetics, the quality of the plastic, the overall hue. It's just everything right here is just really well done. And even the stubble looks legitimately like stubble. It doesn't look like just dirt painted on to make it pass it off as stubble like some other companies like to do. So it's cool to see that it's also still well articulated, though, a little bit tight on mine. I don't know, again, if that's like a secondhand thing or if that's how Mayfix made it. But swapping them out is pretty easy. And even though I do feel like the alternate Peter Parker head does look a little small on this specific body, again, once you get him in poses, once you get him kind of like squatting or looking like he's in, in, in torment, it actually looks pretty good and really sells the image of the symbiote Spidey taking over Peter Parker's life. And so here you have it. So let's say we go for the MSRP, which is about 90 bucks or so at the maximum should you be importing him from Japan as opposed to paying the 110, 100 to 110 from Entertainment Earth or Big Bad Toy Store, etc. Let's go for the import price. 90 bucks. Okay, 90 versus 25. 
I'm sorry, but if I really am going to want a black suit Spidey, I would rather s wait, save my money, and get the Mayfix. There's a reason for why this guy is just so hard to come by, whether it be with the initial release or the reissue, because the quality really speaks for itself. Marvel Legends, sure, much more readily available to the point where at the time during this wave circulation, you could walk into a Target, you can walk into a Walmart, and there it was. And it's pretty straightforward and budget friendly. But it, again, we need to vote with our wallets. What are we really speaking for here? Again, at the end of the day, you can make any you know call you want. It's your money. Use it how you want it. But all I can really do is just pass forward the information of what that money then in turn trades with you, which is going to be the included accessories, the quality of the plastic, and even though Mayfix is not safe from any complaints or discrepancies that I called out here, whether it be the paint mishaps on not, not just on mine, but also on some of the reissues that other people are reporting, there's still enough positive happening here that when someone comes to me with this guy and goes this is one of the best mayfexes it's black suit spidey he looks badass and sure it's 90 bucks but look at everything that's included here i'll be like yeah that looks about right marvel legends still doesn't feel right even at 25 bucks and even with the amount of time he's been in the market reissue or original i'm gonna be giving the mayfex comics accurate black suit spidey a 9 out of 10. It's a kind of a low 9 out of 10 because I have to dock it for, again, those small little paint mishaps. But, again, once I got to playing with him with that alternate head, the aggressive head, putting him in those badass poses of him mid-swing, it just it really did sell on me. And I had a, a smile on my face shooting the B-roll and even outside of filming for the review, just playing around with it. It really did deliver on the message as to why it is that we collect some of these figures in the first place. Something that, frankly, I just haven't been getting from Marvel Legends in ever since the pandemic, quite honestly. But I think I've pissed off enough people for one video. Let me know down below if any of you picked up the reissued Mayfix Black Suit Spidey from the comics. Or did you get the original secondhand or when it first got released? How do you feel about it? Do you think that your opinion has changed? Do you think it's a little bit overrated? Or has it been justifyingly placed as one of the better Mayfexes to have ever been released. Let me know down below, and as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. If not, hit the thumbs down. And in the meantime, you guys know what to do. Stay humble.